Hello guys and welcome to another Tamiya build and review video. I seem to be on a bit of a Tamiya run at the moment and today I'm going to be building this 135th scale elephant tank destroyer which comes in this huge box. And as you might already know the elephant was created in early 1944 as an upgrade to the Ferdinand tank destroyer. And the Ferdinand itself was based on the tank hulls which were originally developed for the Tiger I before the design was rejected. This kit is fairly recent, being released in 2012, and as you would expect it goes together really easily. One thing to note is that although all the elephants had the Zimmermit coating, and in fact the box art shows that as well, Tamiya don't include any decals or tools to create the Zimmermit, you have to buy that separately or create your own. I just wanted to make this a nice fun build so I didn't bother adding any Zimmermit. The kit includes a mechanism to allow you to elevate and rotate the weapon. This single piece here forms the majority of the upper hull. And with the top deck in place and the casemate on top, that's basically the majority of the vehicle created. And one mistake I made here is that I should have painted the interior of the tank black so that you can't see the plastic through any of the open hatches or grills. There are some side skirts here which need to be added. These smaller pieces were a little bit fiddly to add and it's probably best to add all three pieces together at the same time. There aren't many tools on the outside of an elephant but there are a good number of extra pieces like hooks and tow cables and so on. All of the hatches on this kit can be posed open or closed and there is a crew of three, a commander, a gunner and a driver. So I'm going to leave those main hatches open. The suspension arms are a fairly straightforward mechanism and you could glue these in position to pose them if you wanted to. As you can see here there are two types of road wheel and then the two drive sprockets are subtly different and you need to make sure you get those the right way around. And once the suspension arms were glued on, I left the vehicle on a flat surface so that everything would dry nice and level. The only time I had a problem with this kit was with the road wheels here. The wheels with the bigger sort of caps went on nicely, no problems at all. But the other wheels didn't seem to stay very tight. As you can see here, they don't really align very well and they're a little bit wobbly. It almost made me think I've got them the wrong way around, but this is the only way they will fit. And you can see here on the left compared to the right, it just doesn't fit quite right. I'm not sure what the problem was, it was probably my mistake, uh, but it was a little bit difficult to get them lined up properly. The tracks themselves are link and length, so you have to put the individual links around things like the drive sprocket here. And I left all of the wheels and the tracks off until after the later stages of weathering. The gun barrel is a traditional two-piece affair, but it fits together so well that there's really minimal sanding that you need to do to get rid of the seam lines.
I gave the kit a shadow coat of Tamiya Flat Black and then a light coat of their new Dark Yellow 2. Here the black looks like it shows through really really strongly but that will be toned down later on so that's not a big worry at the moment. Now the Tamiya instructions contain three different marking and paint schemes but they're all variations of the standard dark yellow, brown and green German camouflage and I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I was quite inspired by this green kind of spider camouflage pattern from these images here. So I thought I'd have a go at that. I didn't record myself airbrushing because I don't really have the space to do that. But uh, this is what I managed to come up with. And then the next step was to use some thinned dark brown oil paint to highlight the details on the elephant. Obviously there's lots of examples of big bolt heads and so on here. So this really makes things stand out. And you can see here that if the paint is thinned appropriately, as soon as it touches the model, it naturally flows around those details. And of course I did the same thing on the wheels, where there's lots and lots of detail to highlight. And in some cases I covered the entire wheel face in the paint to give it a kind of darker, dirtier look. And you can see the difference here between a wheel where I've done that effect and where I haven't done it yet. It makes a big difference. I used a variety of oil paints to add some dirt effects next. In reality my main go-to colours were the raw umber here on the left and the buff on the right. One thing I dislike about the burnt umber is it looks a little bit too much like rust but I did add small amounts of it. And to prepare the paints for use I squeezed them out onto some tissue paper to absorb some of the linseed oil. The effect I'm going for here is sort of dirt and accumulated grime. And to achieve this I put the unthinned oil paints onto the model and then I blended them in with a dry brush. But occasionally I put a little bit too much paint on and I had to take it off again. And in that case I did use some enamel thinner. And you can see I'm working the paint in until hopefully there's a smooth transition between the paint and the model. And of course I did a similar thing using the lighter buff coloured oil paint. I think this is actually called light mud. For the vertical surfaces I used small dots of oil paint and then I used a wide brush to streak them in an up and down motion to give the impression of sort of grime and rain streaks etc etc. And in this case I did use a small amount of thinner on the brush. At this stage the model can look awful and your gut reaction can be to try to remove the paint straight away before you ruin the model. But if you slowly work with the paint, they gradually work in and you get a nice subtle effect. And of course if you're not happy with the effect, oil paints take a long time to dry so you can still remove them with some thinner even hours later. One thing I also try to do is make sure that the streaks go over the decals and the reason for that is to make them blend in a little bit better and make them look a bit more like they're part of the paintwork. And here are the finished dirt effects and I think it's added a nice level of variation. If we look back at the bare paint scheme. We can see these effects have added a nice bit of visual interest and some nice variation.
To create the mud texture, I use some of my favorite AK dry ground acrylic paste. And I put this on with an old brush on the lower side of the hull. I'm not really interested in the color of this paste so much as the texture because I will go over it later anyway. And I used a little bit of water to thin the paste at the edges and blend it in with the model. To do the mud effects I used this Summer Kursk Earth enamel color and that will change the color of the paste and it will also act as a binder for the pigments. I used a dark brown pigment, I forget what color this is because the label is rubbed off. And then I used a second lighter color pigment which was European Earth. So once the acrylic paste was dry I used the Kursk Earth enamel over the top. And here I was aiming for complete coverage of the acrylic paste. Then when the paste was still wet, I started to add the darker of the pigments. It looks really dark here because it gets wet from the enamel, but it will dry slightly lighter. And I covered most, but not all of the enamel with this dark pigment. And of course I did the same thing on the wheels as well. Once that had dried it looked quite messy, but I came back with my lighter European Earth pigment. And here I put much less of the pigment on, I still wanted some of the darker pigment to show through. And to blend it properly, I made sure that I was streaking the pigment in a vertical motion to give the impression of dust and dirt running down the hole. Unfortunately, most of this won't be seen anyway because it'll be hidden by the wheels. A lot of these ideas I got from Panzermeister 36s channel. If you haven't checked out that channel, I'd strongly recommend that you do. He's got some great tutorials on all kinds of building, painting and weathering. And finally I used some AK wet effects enamel fluid in small areas of the mud. And you can see here that once the wheels and the tracks are on most of those mud effects are hidden. But I do think that if they weren't there it would be very noticeable. So the next step was to apply the same effects to the tracks and the process was exactly the same. I started with the enamel Kursk Earth colour. While that was still wet I added the dark pigment and then once that was dry I added the light earth pigment. Once all those pigments were dried I used a pencil to go over the raised areas of the tracks and I was trying to create the impression here of the uh, metal raised areas of the track which would be free of mud because they would be in contact with the road. Finally, I've seen quite a few images of foliage used as camouflage by German vehicles, especially late in the war when they're fighting a defensive war. And I wanted to do something similar to that. And to do that, I decided to use this sea foam. By breaking it into smaller pieces to represent branches or trees, I could attach it to the outside of the vehicle. Previously, I made a video where I created several different types of sea foam trees using different materials. I'll put a link in the top corner. Here you can see three of them. On the left hand side we have short static grass. In the middle we have flock. And on the right hand side we have some scatter. And the two types I decided to use for this vehicle were the static grass and the scatter on the left and the right hand sides. The first step was to paint the sea foam and I used some old Tamiya rattle cans for that. There's not much paint left in these, I want to use them up. Uh, I haven't used them much since I got my airbrush and they're just taking up space. So I took some random brown, grey and green. And here are the materials that I decided to use. This is a very short 2.5mm static grass. 
And this is the Jarvis scatter, which looks very much like leaves. I got a bit lazy here. You can spray the sea foam with a mixture of glue and water, but instead I just dipped them in a bowl of scenic glue. And then when the glue was still wet, I sprinkled over some of the flocking material. I think that effect looks quite nice and you can see my collection of trees here. To attach the trees to the vehicle, I use this black rigging. In my initial attempt, I glued one end of the rigging to the vehicle and then tried to wrap it around a branch and glue the other end. That wasn't very practical and I ended up knocking lots of leaves off the branches. So in the end, I just glued the rigging on first. And one of the advantages of the rigging is that it's quite stretchy so you can pull it away and insert the branches afterwards. While I was attaching the rigging, I tried to make sure that it went around natural attachment points like big bolt heads or hooks and so on, where the crew could conceivably have tied rope. And then it was just a case of inserting the branches under the rigging. I put the figures in place so that I didn't obviously obstruct their view. And I didn't want to cover the vehicle completely, but I did want to break up the outline. Finally, I brushed off the leaves which I'd knocked loose from the branches, and I added a bit of scenic glue to the vehicle and put those leaves back on as leaves which would have fallen off during the cutting or the adding of the camouflage. And with that done, the model was complete, so let's look at the final result. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. This was a really fun kit to build, as you'd expect from Tamiya, a nice easy build. And I had a lot of fun doing the weathering too, with the pigments for mud effects and the oil paints for weathering. And I think the foliage adds that final touch. Now I'm very aware that in my last video, I said that the next video would be the Trumpeter Vulcan, and that's obviously not been the case. Uh, I do hope that my next video will be the Vulcan. It just needs a few final touches, but I haven't really been in the mood for it at the moment. Hopefully that will change in the next week or so, and we will see the Trumpeter Vulcan in my next video. So until then, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please do remember to give a thumbs up. And if it's your first time on the channel, then please do consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys.